Hey, what's up everybody? It is Monday, March 27th. So I had my appearance today, very brief, on Fox Business, making money with Charles Payne, my uh, co-guest uh, or co-panelist. I should tell you his name is Joe Lavornia. He's an economist with, uh, uh, I don't know, some Japanese bank. Anyway, uh, and I didn't know it was going to be like a debate format. They told me that, and it was uh, actually it was just it was uh, Joe's a really nice guy, and it, it wasn't heated or anything like that. But of course, it's TV. It's a very short segment, so it's like four minutes. It's nothing. And I, I'm going to put the whole clip up here. That I I just uh, recorded the, the screenshot or the, the the video from my computer screen, but. The actual link to the clip, I'm, put, I'm going to put it in the description below. So here it is. I mean, there were a lot of things we could have got into. Um, we kind of really just barely touched on the surface. But again, that's television. Everything is boiled down into sound bites and very small snippets of conversation. And so... Uh, Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. I like long format presentations, whether they be podcasts or, you know, the kind of YouTube uh, videos I do. Uh, but here it is, so check it out. All right, folks, here we go. Free money versus free markets. Now, for some time there's been chatter uh, in, in the United States about incorporating what they call modern monetary theory, or MMT as a system that would uh, usher in fairness and remove financial stress for everyone forever. Now, essentially, the government can print money, and they should print money. This is according to the theory. In fact, there's much money that is needed. So during the COVID-19 emergency, uh, there were really some real chances to pull off MMT. President Biden, in fact, flooded the nation with trillions of dollars, uh, and then it led to what economists call excess savings, $2.4 trillion worth of excess savings. Now, admittedly, folks, that felt great, right? Everybody was shopping. Everyone had money in the bank. In fact, some people stopped working. I mean, you're right. And they were able to focus on things like the, the meaning of life, which is easy to do when you actually make more money chilling out at home than punching a clock. But the rules of partying 101 have now kicked in, right? You know about it. The more booze, the more fun. But that hangover, there's hell to pay. So inflation has spiked. It remains at highest levels in four decades. Still, there's a lot of smart people out there that say MMT is the best choice for our nation, while a lot of smart folks say, let's stick with what made us the richest, most powerful nation in the world, free market capitalism. Joining me now, Mike Norman, MMT economics founder and chief economist. And uh, uh, with the, also, we got Joe Lavornia. He's a former White House chief economist and now with SNBC. So, Mike, tell, tell the world what MMT is. MMT is just a description of how the monetary system functions, but it makes the distinction between entities or countries that issue their own currency, like the United States, Canada, Australia, Great Britain, and countries that are users of currency, like the countries in the Eurozone now, like Germany no longer has its own currency. They don't have a printing press. Italy don't no longer. They gave up yeah. their printing press. They gave up their sovereign currency. So uh, what we talk about in MMT is that it's not that there's no limits. It's just that the, the nation has the ability to spend what it wants, but it is constrained by the amount of real assets that are available. In other words, do you have enough labor? Do you have enough resources? Do you have enough productive capacity? Do you have enough you know, brain power? How's the environment? Right. I mean, these things are, are finite things that can go away. So it's not a question of, do we have the money? Uh, you can't run out of money. Money, basically, as it exists, well, that, as we know it now, what, it's on the books of right. the Fed as electronic entries in a computer. So you can't run out. But you have to be aware. You mentioned earlier uh, that inflation went up. But you didn't mention that we had an entire shutdown of the global economy, which was unable well, no, to why, cause, produce cause it's anything. Only, it's only a one-hour show. But anything. if you watch it, I've talked about in 2020, I think the money that was provided by governments was legitimate. I think in 2021, President Biden was trying to buy votes. That's the distinction I make, because household savings were never better. Corporate, pro corporate balance sheets were never better. Coming into 2021, there was no need for that. So to me, that's the basis. That was the experiment. 
with um, modern monetary theory. And the way AOC puts it, right, she's not as academic as you. It's essentially, it's dumb. It's dumb to have poor people in a country, to your point, that has a printing press. What do you say to that, Joe? The MMT, uh, Mike qualified it, I think, in a good way because there are limitations. Um, the way I understand MMT may be a bit more extreme than the way Mike said, which is if you have a, uh, a sovereign country with a sovereign currency, you can't run out of the money. However, I would argue that minimizes a little bit the inflation risk. For example, we saw with the UK back in uh, last September, you had an expansionary budget, the bond vigilantes came out, they raised rates. What does that market. mean, though, for people who don't know what you so, talk, that, that don't know the terminology? There are, I guess, there are there are limits to what you can do because economics itself is scarce resources. I would agree with Mike. If Mike's point, I think it is that a sovereign country, by definition, can't default on its on its obligations to right. so just print more money. However, however, this is the big however. Inflation becomes a problem. Right. That's when people talk about the Zimbabwe example, or right. as I was saying with, with Britain, just with Britain, that the market forced. Right. The Chancellor of the Exchequer so, uh, and the Prime right. Minister well, it, it to only, back away on that stimulus. But it, it really only becomes a problem when you don't have the productive ca capacity to meet uh, the purchasing power that the government is supplying. I'll give you an example. Alan Greenspan once said in a response to um, is Social Security better privatizing? Greenspan said, look, the government can create as much money as it wants to and pay it to whomever it wants to. Right. The real question is, can we create a system where the real assets are going to be there for which that money to consume? Let me, let me then, just, go so the thing, so what I would say, and this is maybe where I disagree with MMT, is that to me taxes and regulation matter. I, I'm a reformed Keynesian who's become a supply sider because the tax structure you have creates incentives to companies to do things ideally because what money is spent is important to increase the capital stock, to lift productivity, to lift wages. Let me ask so you that this, all Joe. matters. Let me ask you this, Joe. A lot of folks who, who have bought into MMT, and again, not on the academic level of, of, of Mike, say that they believe it's a fair system, that our system is the richest, that we have the richest country in the world, but we have so many poor people that somehow the government can make, could fix that, can lift these folks up just by with the push of a button. No, the, if you want to deal with, if, what are the ways to increase productivity is to increase human capital. That means improving education. Maybe that means school choice. Maybe that means I less agree. power for teachers unions. Uh, whatever it might be, and I'm not going to pick a side at this point, but the point is you want to get education as a, a, as a resource, a natural resource, higher, that people could come out of that position so they're in high-skilled jobs. And, and I think, uh, Charles, you're really touching more on a political issue like when it comes, uh, Biden just passed what almost an 890 billion defense budget. Nobody asked like, where's the money going to come from? You need 14 billion dollars for an aircraft carrier. Boom, the money's there. Nobody asked. But Joe, you know, he's correct. I mean, the the most important capital in any nation is the human capital. So it's it's really a political discussion of where are our priorities? Where do uh, we direct? you know, our ability to fund the things that we need to fund to create a more egalitarian the, society. I guess the argument, against, not against that, but the thing most people say is, you know what, one year, that number is 14 trillion. And somehow, a year later, it's 18 trillion. And somehow, a year later, it's 22 trillion. So, I mean, and that's where people start to say, you know, then you put on the debt to make, to reach that. Who's going to pay the debt? It's over $30 trillion. But, it's, 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 so the, it's a moving target, and it's never satisfied. It's never satisfied, and that's why I think some people believe it's just much better if you can push a button and hit the new number. I mean, there were bond vigilantes way back when. The aging of the population, falling productivity, declining real equilibrium rates have all increased debt burdens, which is keeping interest rates down. It's forcing interest rates down. The fact that Fed's had to raise rates is the reason we've got this banking crisis to the extent we do. All right, uh, I'm getting the wrap signal. Last word, Mike, a short yeah, word. Yeah. I mean, MMT... I, and I call it free money. Uh, it, that's that's just an because the like, government prints it out silly, of nowhere. The government that, prints it out of nowhere. But there's the people. But Charles, like I said in the beginning, MMT never said anything was free. There's a cost, and the cost comes in real terms, and that's do we have food? Do we have medicine? Do we have health care? Do we have education? We've done do we have for a few hundred years housing? without MMT though? With we're, all of those things you're talking about, we're we're a great country. There's no doubt about it, but uh, I think we limit ourselves in this belief that money is a finite thing, that maybe we dig it up out of the ground and we don't have enough 
That's the wrong way to look at it. All right, I'll leave you with the last word. We'll, we'll, we'll pick this up again, definitely for sure. Mike, Joe, thank you both very much, guys. And that was it. So, I don't know. Uh, I apologize for the sound quality again. I was just uh, recording that off of my computer screen. But if you click on the link that I put in the description, I think you'll get a better quality uh, clip. So, you might want to check it out there. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. See you tomorrow. Bye.